Lady and gentlemen, boys and girl, welcome aboard the BDMMA channel. Um, we're going to do a multi-part series leading up to Khabib versus El Kukui. This is part one. Uh, it'll be K Khabib Submission Grappling. I'm going to just title it Submission Grappling, but part two will obviously be Tony's. Um, what I wanted to focus on was almost specifically submissions but sometimes there's some cool guard passing and things of that nature that I wanted to cover as well so we're going to try to do this somewhat in order starting with Khabib it looks like he's 17 his combat sambo days but this is a Harai Makakomi into a Juji Gatame which is essentially a, a he's defending a double leg and he reverses that into an arm bar now check this out as this guy shoots in Khabib keeps his arm separate uses his leg as a fulcrum there into that beautiful hip toss and as we slow it down I'll be able to break it down a little bit better there he is now he goes for that his, his left legs posted out in a way so that person can't really get to his hips and his head position is going to be a little bit off center where his Habib's hips and fulcrum are in, are in place. That's a Georgian grip which is right on the belt and that right leg to right hip is kind of halting momentum that way and this is how he's able to flip him over and then use the momentum then go belly down armbar Juji Katame. The problem is that he doesn't have he doesn't have complete isolation of the person's hips but this is worth another watch check this out beautifully violent now i wouldn't have shown this if it were just for this little kind of screw up where he didn't get the tap so he's got a little leg entanglement he's going to grab the jacket but he's got to free up his leg basically that's all he's doing there it is transfers over and now you'll see he'll he'll put his legs together and he's going to get spiked but he's ready for it he kind of break falls spider web here and right there that isolation so He's using basically the momentum of this slam to cross his feet and grab the arm to isolate at the same time right there. Now, now that it's locked in, his left leg goes over the, the head, feet are pinched in together, and you get the tap. Wonderful stuff. Indeed. And because I can't really go, you know, tit for tat in combat sambo versus anything I'm going to get from Tony, which is mostly going to be in an MMA context, uh, I wanted to focus on this this Naga event that Khabib competed in 2012. Um, won double gold at the Worlds, which I didn't know. So if you didn't know, don't feel bad about it. Uh, we're going to start off with some of these throws and just his utter dominance. These guys that look much bigger. Beautiful knee pick deflected into an Uchimata right there. And here you're going to see two straight, what they would call in judo, like running throws. I forget the exact translation, which, by the way, are usually literal. So first, that was an outside reap. <clears throat> Minor outside reap. Here, he's kind of isolated that single leg like he was going to do something with it. But again, he's reaping legs. They're very judo-esque. But he'll credit Sambo. Um, here's a beautiful inner knee reap. It comes up high on that underhook into that knee pick. That is beautiful. See, that's more freestyle wrestling. He, he really does both well, honestly. Now, there's a slippery little guard pass into an interesting little Kimura, how he attacks it. So he dekes out on the head fake right there. Well, head fake as if he was going for the head. Now, he's isolated the Kimura, so he can't be he can't roll out of it. And now he goes heavy hip pressure, leg over. I learned that as the Danaher Kimura, and then I learned it from John himself. Um, but I don't know that he invented it or anything. It's just the way that I know it. P.S. Because I'm using so many judo names, I don't want anyone to get too caught up in it. They're not even wearing a gi at this point. But this would be a Kasoto Gari or a minor outer reap. Again, they're usually pretty literal. Um, if you've ever seen Yoel Romero do that, he did, he did it uh, to Machida and someone else. I think maybe Brunson. I forget it's been a while, but he, he's excellent at that. The the key to that throw is really in your back arch, in your, in your angle. You take up and around somebody so that you can kind of lift them to then advance your sweep. Now, this one here was interesting for kind of a variety of reasons, especially because this was 2012, and I don't think anyone really caught on until recently, but it's an approach to a butterfly pass. Now, watch his left elbows, isolation of the hip. He kind of steps over, but the triangulation right there of the legs is just beautiful. And you don't, you're not taught that as a butterfly guard pass early. That's probably quite obvious to any jujitsu practitioner. 
Uh, here he hops over into a front face lock with his left arm. He's going to stabilize the hip with his right. So check this out from top position like normal. Although there is some guard play later, don't worry. So he hops over. It's kind of like a knee slice. He's going to go for a front face lock into north he's going north south but he comes back around clears the left arm for a back take and then he'll set the hooks and he does it a little different than the norm like he'll, he'll set his hooks first and adjust with his arm second see right there beautiful stuff and again you can just sometimes you can just like listen to the crowd you get a little wow you know that's that's pretty damn cool in the un unlikely event that it's needed, Khabib has a, uh, a wonderful guard. And I'll, I'll demonstrate it more as we go. There's a couple of times overseas, etc., where he had to use it. But here he is, fending off. And he's used, he's going wide and then tight, keeping feet to hips when he needs to. Underhooks on the legs, spinning out, up. I'll check this out right away. He gets an underhook, wrist control into another Kosoto Gari, which, again, minor outside sweep. And... This is beautiful stuff. Watch watch how he gets so high on the underhook right here. Boom, and he clasps his hands. Beautiful stuff. Knee slice into the pyramid pass, which I've covered ad nauseum. I don't really feel the need to explain it, but it's a balanced kind of head positioning into tripoding your legs, and then you can slide your knee through. Sometimes you can shift your hips to go either way with it. Of course, more absurdity. This is a north-south to mount to mount a triangle attempt uh this this passing is like liquid and this is without striking you know i mean khabib is arguably the best grappler in mma maybe ever and certainly there's an argument for now um but a lot of that's credited with his ground striking and, and you got to watch things like this where there's no striking to really appreciate it so check out this back take beautiful like loosening up of the hands on that and it's right into a sequitur back take. It's incredible. So I can't pronounce that. It's Ashi and Judo, but the translations, like I said earlier, they're, they're quite literal. It means lifting, pulling, ankle throw. And without a gi kimono, it's, it's really tough to kind of put the correct nomenclature to these. But that one, see, that's more of like a foot sweep than it is like a, an actual trip or a reap. So here's a kind of a weak attempt at mission control slash people just know it as rubber guard, but he uses kind of the Marcello style of fending off the rubber guard by going high and tight with his head into the armpit there and his elbows tighten to his knee. Now, what makes this kind of interesting is he goes cross faced and it looks like he's going to try to cradle above there, although he didn't. Either way, winner of two gold medals at the 2012 Naga Worlds. I understand it's not ADCC, but how many of you have won Naga Worlds? I'm going to go with very few. Um, minus fighters, of course, you have my ultimate respect. So, let's fast forward a tad to his MMA. Grappling, or shall we? Okay. Well, here in this church, looks like he starts with a single leg takedown into a, a very one, two, three sequitur kind of mounted triangle, which is something you'll see that he likes, especially when someone hugs onto him from mount there like that. Um, interesting uh, transition right there. And he'll just squeeze straight in rather than angle out. He'll punch from there as well and, and roll over his shoulders, etc., etc. He's got an interesting approach to triangles and, and how he uses arm bars into triangles, into arm bars. And... Vice, vice versa, as I think my mom would say. So here again, this is uh, this might be like M1 Global or one of those organizations overseas. Um, this ref is very close for my likings, and a nice little three-second takedown into Kimura. This is the absurdity that this could be when he wants to really turn it on. There he is, high pressure tap. It's over. I ripped the guy's shoulder out. Mounted triangle. This one starts off his back, however, so it's a little different. This is kind of the shoulder roll I was speaking to earlier. See how he gets really, really into like a small package there, which doesn't sound flattering. Um, this is a single leg crackdown into a double leg. So again, from Mount he goes, Jujigatame with an elbow pinch and rolls into a triangle. It's very prime Honda housey. Um, and they're hump host. She's, uh, 
she was excellent at arm bars if nothing else so we got to give her that so check out here she's a little bit loose on that hook he's going to tighten up that elbow right inside and the as the right foot goes over the left shoulder of the opponent now he's got options galore so he's going to lay back and then set up the triangle even though the arm's still isolated so he's kind of got a, a two-pronged approach there he could pull on the arm as well there's a nice outside reef this person's really flexible as they're trying to get out here but Khabib's doing this kind of Henzo style rolling arm bar or trying to set it up a little more difficult with the ropes there and I guess you could kind of use him to halt momentum he could do it in a cage too Connor did and uh, I think he got warned maybe for doing it seven times during their fight oh I I wasn't going to bring that up, I'm sorry. And this is kind of drawn out, but I, I wasn't going to like skip parts of it. There's a little, this guy's obviously a good grappler and strong, whoever he's doing it to, because he's having trouble breaking the grip here, even with crossed feet. And again, I'm not an anti-crossed feet person, unless it's like a weak back mount. But in a situation like this, crossing your feet is just not dangerous. I don't, I don't understand why we learned that it is. So the next section's obviously on the main stage, and this is going to be some of this is going to be damage into submission. But when I do Tony's, I'm going to have to do this as well. So <clears throat> I figure, why not? That's Shallow Roos in the side naked choke. Michael Johnson with that beautiful step over Kimura, and the key's really twisting your hips until they're kind of adjacent with each other, and then that double wrist lock should close, be close to your spine, and then you want to raise it up toward head. I remember Rogan kind of freaking out there, like, he's going to break his arm, he's going to break his arm, though I don't really blame Joe being a, uh, <laughs> a product of Henzo Gracie, of course. I understand that shoulders can tear, and it's horrifying. So the ones that have happened in the UFC, I've covered already uh, ad nauseum, and I don't want to really be redundant here, so we can just kind of watch and free ball it. Um, and I say that the same way that I say boys and girl. This was a different angle on the attempted switch Dustin tried. There's the angle that we're used to seeing um, in their fight. And the key to this, and this is pretty cool, once I kind of re-watched it a few times and didn't just rush it into a breakdown for everyone was on the one that actually got through there the way that he popped his hand out it was really interesting how he he punched to then peel the path for his other arm to sink behind his head so from right there so he kind of does this little pop out from the punch he left his left hand on the temple and then popped down to isolate the arm before cinching up behind the head it was just beautiful stuff and of course as i let the rest of this play out in all of its beauty and, and majesty. Um, I don't really want to, I'm not going to cover one of them that I've already taken enough for, but uh, one thing that comes to mind here is I read once that John Jones was saying that Khabib would be better if he had learned s submissions, and I think John should do his homework before he makes ridiculous statements, as he just seems to do. But um, this is celebratory, as will Tony's be. I'm not really. I'm gonna try to be imp as impartial as possible. But you're looking at the pound for pound king with his toughest test coming up soon, no doubt. I mean, there's no doubt about that. And I like that Khabib's in his camper being honest about it. I can't say the same for Tony, but it be what it be. Um, in the comment section, please try to leave some uh ideas going forward because this might be like an eight part series the fight's not for a couple months etc so i want to give you guys as much info as i can and cover as much as i can uh, logistically it's really hard to predict this fight honestly where it's going to go etc yet it's the most important and biggest stage fight ever really um my patreon link will be in the link or description below as always and i thank you for watching cheers